What is up everybody, my name is Boba Talks and today I'm going to bring you basically an explainer video as to what actually happened in that Westchester event many many years ago in this Logan timeline and basically just explain what actually happened to the mutants and the X-Men in this world. So if you haven't seen Logan, as I said in my review, please go and watch it and then come back to this video because this video will have a lot of spoilers in it and some of you may have already pieced together actually what happened in the past of the film's timeline. But in this video, I'm just going to bring it all together and talk about what the director has said about it and what we actually know in the film and actually what happened in the past. I also go on to explain in this video how the director actually was going to open the film with this traumatic event and I talk about the reasons as to why he didn't. And I also discuss about why mutants aren't being born in the world anymore. Maybe you were one of those people who were scratching their heads in the cinema as to what, you know, really happened in the past. So I hope this video clarifies that for you and I hope you find it interesting. So if you do go ahead and like this video guys, please show your support by hitting that like button as it really does help the channel out. So if you've seen Logan, you'll know that the film is set in a world where mutants aren't really around anymore except for a few, but also the fact that if you've seen the film, you would know that they tease an event that happened called the Westchester Incident, which had a big part in getting rid of the X-Men we once knew. So assuming you've seen the film Logan, you'll know whether you pieced it together or not that something happened in the past and Charles Xavier is responsible. So everybody knows that Charles Xavier ran a school called Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, basically a school where he taught mutants how to control and explore their powers. Now one thing about this film is the details are scarce, they don't quite literally paint it out on the screen, but there is enough puzzle pieces to sort of put together the picture, or at least work out most of it. So in Logan, Charles Xavier is in his 90s and is suffering from Alzheimer's, and because of this, Charles is having these seizures, and as a result of this, it really does bring on some dark consequences as you may have seen in the film because when he has one of his seizures everybody cannot breathe they're basically paralyzed and they're effectively like this for as long as Charles is having a seizure and the only way to basically stop Charles from doing this even though he's not obviously doing it on purpose is to give him some medicine that inhibits his powers so if you remember when Charles was having that seizure in the film, one at the beginning of the film where he managed to get the meds and one later on in the film where he eventually did get the meds but it was a great struggle and everybody nearby, you know, basically could have died and a lot of people were injured as a result anyway. And if you are wondering why Logan manages to reach Charles even though he really does struggle, as well as Laura, it's because of their healing factor. So if you haven't already figured it out, something like this happened many, many years ago with the X-Men. Now these facts aren't concrete but it is is enough to paint the picture that sometime in the past when mutants were around you know Charles's school for gifted youngsters and mutants was very much how we've seen in previous films he probably had one of these seizures which as a result unfortunately killed most of the X-Men and this was even further confirmed because of a report on the radio after the event in the casino where Charles had this episode in the movie they referenced how it was a very similar event to what happened many years ago in Westchester where five or six hundred people were really injured and several people died and these several people were most likely the key members of the X-Men and it does make sense how in the film Logan they label his mind or just Charles in general as a weapon of mass destruction because as you can imagine or if you've seen the film already you would know that when he has one of these seizures it can be absolutely catastrophic if it isn't stopped. Now as for why mutants haven't been born in many many years it is because of the government slipping in basically this anti-mutant substance into food basically an ingredient that will be in in mostly all foods like sugar and stuff like that as well as many many water supplies so you can imagine the birth rate of mutants after basically most of the food that you'll eat will have this anti-mutant toxin it will basically prevent any future mutants from being born so with this all in mind it really really is you know tragic and it adds so much more to the film you know with the backstory and, and what is teased throughout the film with the Westchester incident when you fully understand what kind of happened in the past with this incident and how you can imagine how it went down and then when you look at Patrick Stewart or Charles Xavier in the film you can really see just how much heartache it presents for his character and just how tragic the film is in general. I mean Charles opened up this school and opened his doors to all kinds of mutants just so you know he could help them flourish. I mean we all know what Charles Xavier is about and for him to be responsible for the destruction of his closest friends and family because they were effectively his family the X-Men has got to be the most tragic thing anybody could possibly go through. I mean we do see in the film Charles get very upset and you know remembering because he has got Alzheimer's so he, he does have mood swings but he is kind of throughout the film hot mostly there but he does you know remember just like it is yesterday sometimes you know what he actually did and what he was responsible for through one of his seizures even though obviously it wasn't of his own doing. 
So I hope that gave you a bit of context, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the little brief explainer. I know some of you may have already figured this out, but this is more for those who didn't really piece together or wondering what may have specifically happened all those years ago to the X-Men and as to why mutants aren't being born anymore. Now, another thing I wanted to end this video with is how they were actually going to film this and what, you know, this was inspired from with the whole mutant extinction and with the X-Men being taken out as well. Recently, there was an article which states how the Logan director explains why you know the Westchester incident wasn't shown. So if you're wondering if there is any background or any you know inspiration where this whole Westchester incident came from, in the Old Man Logan storyline something really tragic happened just like this but I'm really glad they kind of changed it up because it was like a new fresh take but anyway what happened in the comics version of this similar storyline is that something really bad happened to Logan and Logan basically ditched being a hero and his Wolverine persona and went to go live a quiet life somewhere else on the farm. Now through flashbacks we actually get explained and we see why he stepped away from being a hero and in these flashbacks we see him slaughtering a whole bunch of supervillains that were attacking Charles's school but that's not actually what really happened. What really happened is that Mysterio created an illusion that tricked Wolverine into slicing every every single one of his X-Men teammates. Now, obviously, they didn't want to completely copy that storyline, so they made a storyline where, you know, through Charles Xavier getting much, much older, he basically got a disease, most likely that of being Alzheimer's, and through seizures, you know, and his amazing power, because Charles within himself, uh, as we all know, is a very powerful mutant, basically suffers a seizure-like attack at his school for gifted youngsters, and because of his telepathic abilities, basically paralyzes around 600 people and kills several core X-Men members. So the director James Mangold actually revealed recently that the Westchester incident was written by him and he had actually planned to open the film with it. And this is what he said in response to as to why he cut it. It also made the movie about that. It was really interesting. It suddenly made the movie about X-Men dying, as opposed to allowing the movie to be a kind of unwinding onion, like allowing you to kind of enter the story and go. Where is this going? It was so large and loomed so large, and I felt like it also was still falling into the formula of the movies, with the big opener that is setting up the mythology first. I thought, what if we do an opener that leans into the character first, actually underplay those things, let them feel like it's more of like a what's that? a normal thing like it's happened and instead of underlining it yeah just let it live in the background of all these characters so i think what he's basically trying to say here is instead of you know basically opening the film with the scene of Charles having a seizure that paralyzed 600 people and killed, you know, several people. He kind of preferred this vision where we see, obviously, like, at the beginning of Logan, Charles in that massive hollow tank, and they sometimes reference, you know, this, you know, event in the past, the Westchester incident, and then throughout the film, you know, piecing it together, it kind of has a more meaningful impact and makes you wonder a bit more rather than, you know, them just showing it outright. And I kind of agree with that. Don't get me wrong, it would have been really, really awesome to see this really traumatic traumatic event you know at the beginning of the film but as I said I do agree with where he says what if we do an opener that leans into the character first and actually underplay you know the things that happened in the past and just let it live in the background of all these characters and that is exactly what Logan does you know Charles is really upset and you know cries a couple times and confesses his guilt as to what happened when he remembers because of his you know Alzheimer's in his brain in a lot of ways this way is actually more tragic because the audience is really wondering and in their own minds imagining in every individual person person's head in that audience a unique way of how this all could have gone down. But let me know what you think guys, would you have preferred to have seen the traumatic event where Charles's seizure actually kills the X-Men and injures many many people, or do you prefer what the director did by not actually filming and opening the film this way? Alright guys, so if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button as it really does help me out, and if you aren't actually subscribed to this channel maybe subscribe for more explaining videos just like this one. So that is all from this video guys, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.